Good morning and welcome to Viewfield Baptist Church Dunfermline uh, and to our online Boxing Day Sunday morning service. It's good to have you with us this morning as we come together to worship and to share around the Lord's table. I trust you all enjoyed a peaceful and joy-filled Christmas day yesterday uh, and that you're not on Santa's naughty list. Our Pastor Ray is now on holiday until the 5th of January so today's service will be led by Pete Hutchinson. Please remember if you have any pastoral needs or indeed if you're aware of any others in need um, while Ray is on holiday please contact one of the leadership or pastoral care team who will be pleased to help you. The other notices are in the bulletin for this week and if you're visiting us online you can find a link to this on the Viewfield uh, website. I would like to mention just one notice and that is to let you know that we will be taking our usual walk around uh, Lockor Meadows on January the 1st and that will be at 1pm. Um, all are welcome to join us um, and you can find more information about that in the bulletin. Our service next week will be online and in person at 10.30 as usual uh, when we'll be led in worship and communion by Brian McCarthy. Let's still ourselves now as we, uh, as we prepare for worship uh, and let's pray together. Father God, as we come before you now in worship, uh, prepare our hearts to praise you, to worship you and to hear your word. Father, we pray that you would speak through your word this morning that you would speak into our hearts the things that you would have us hear. Father, we, we want to be the people you want us to be. Uh, we want to live our lives the way that uh, you want us to live them. But we can only do that through the enabling power of your Holy Spirit. So just move amongst us this morning, we pray. And be especially close to those two who are uh, uh, worshipping in person this morning. Uh, be uh, in that service too but just come to us now as we uh, come to you in praise and worship in the mighty name of Jesus Amen <laughs>
there are few emotions more powerful than hope. It's a spark inside you that brings a smile to your lips, a light that shows on your face, a feeling that lifts your head and pulls you forward. These days, hope like that often feels hard to come by. Maybe you've experienced your share of disappointments, but real hope is what the Christian faith claims to offer. A joyful expectation for the future, based on true events in the past, which changes everything about my present. Hope Explored is a three session series for anyone who is looking for a hope worth having. Whatever you do or don't believe, this is your invitation to explore, to discuss, to question, to discover. This is Hope Explored. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, this Boxing Day Sunday morning we come to you with our hearts full of praise and adoration. We want to worship you afresh this morning to thank you that you have a plan, that you wanted to show love to us where we didn't deserve your love. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you sent your Son, the Lord Jesus, to be our Christmas present, to live a life on this earth, to show us how we should lead our lives, to follow your will, to go all the way to the cross, there to defeat sin, to die and to rise again victorious. Our hearts are full of praise. Love divine, joy of heaven, to earth come down. Jesus, we thank you that you lived amongst us. You showed us love which has no boundaries. You showed us compassion in ways that astound us and stir our hearts. Lord, we ask that you visit us afresh this day. Oh, that we might learn from you, that we would learn more from you. We thank you that your Holy Spirit lives within our hearts. We ask you again afresh right now, Lord, please fill us afresh with your loving spirit this day. You know where we are in our walk as Christians. We may be soaring high in our relationship with you. We may have a troubled breast. Father, we reach out to you afresh this morning, opening our hearts, our souls, our minds. Please, through your spirit, bring peace, comfort, reassurance, guidance, discernment, cleansing and restoration. Father, I pray that we this morning will value the inheritance that we have in and through what you have done for us. I pray this morning that we will find a fresh rest and peace what you promise, what you offer. And Father, I pray that you'll take away from us our love of sinning and that you will cleanse and restore us again today. Set our hearts at liberty. May we know, may we experience freedom from all that holds us back in our relationship with you. May we love you and serve you as you have first loved us. Jesus, what can I bring to so faithful a friend, to so loving a king? Saviour, what can be said, what can be sung as a praise of your name 
for the things that you have done. Oh, my words could not tell, not even in part, of the debt of love that is owed by this, by our thankful hearts. In surrender, Lord Jesus, I, we, must give every part. Lord, receive the sacrifice of a broken heart. Amen. And let's now sing these words together. scripture reading this morning is taken from Luke chapter 2 beginning at verse 22. Then it was time for their purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says if a woman's first child is a boy he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered the sacrifice required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. At that time there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was a righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the Lord required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace, as you have promised. I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people, Israel. 
Jesus' parents were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and he said to Mary, the baby's mother, This child is destined to cause many in Israel to fall, and as many others to rise. He has been sent as a sign from God, but many will oppose him. As a result, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and the sword will pierce your very soul. Amen. I trust that God will add his blessing to the reading of his word, and he will lead us too as we look into the words. In Jesus' name. We may well have woken up this Boxing Day morning and looked around our room and our hearts would be full of thanksgiving for kindness shown to us by our family and friends, surveying the gifts received, thinking about the gifts given and the joyous times that we have just shared. Or we may get up and exclaim, thank goodness that Christmas has passed for another year. This time of year brings back so many bad memories. This time highlights major difficulties in our lives that may well be existing just now. Reading an article recently, the topic covered, you know, what do we do with unwanted presents? The article proffered the following statistics re unwanted presents. 23.2% said keep them. 22.5% said re-gift them. 21.9% said donate them. 11.3% said sell them. Exchange them gave us 9.9%. Throw them away, 6.1%. Give them back, 4.7%. And there's always another category, and that was 0.4%. What do we do with unwanted presents? In today's reading, we see that Mary and Joseph, having received the gift of a son, the Lord Jesus, took him to the temple to present him to God. When there, Simeon took the baby Jesus in his arms and he exclaimed his praises to God. Simeon said, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all your people. Simeon also proclaimed, Jesus is 
a light by which God will be revealed to the nations. And Simeon acknowledged, Jesus is the glory of your people, Israel. Now I know that we can have different views on Christmas, but this morning I am really focusing in on our view of God's present to us. And what do we do with that present? Each and every one of us are all on life journeys. They are similar but uniquely different. We have both personal and shared experiences and into this amazing concoction of our lives. It is a fact that we have all been given a present from our Heavenly Father. This baby Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And in, as we read in Isaiah 9, these lovely words, For a child is born to us, a son is given. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. I want us to hold on to these words in this day, in these days. I want us to never forget how the, these words were introduced to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. Our God is sovereign. And just at the end here, his government and its peace will never end. So in those dark days when we are doubting things, our sovereign God is in control. He initiated this plan and he is still in control throughout the working out of this plan. Praise God for that. Today, is Jesus a wanted or unwanted gift for you? The gift given and received at Christmas, the Lord Jesus, he is amazing. The baby Jesus is in fact God coming into this world as man for a particular purpose. Let's look at some of the verses that tell us about this gift from God. In Matthew 1 we read that Mary will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said. In John 3 we read these words for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In Matthew 22, Jesus, replying to a conversation, said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. And then jumping to John chapter 8, when Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. And then in Matthew 5, to round this off, no one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your Heavenly Father. So you see in these verses that I've just read just now there, there is a giving of a present, but, there in the, but thereafter there is a dealing with this present. We have to use this present. It's not all for ourselves. These verses tell us about God's gift, who he is and what he will do. But furthermore, the verses tell us that God's son Jesus also had a message for you and me. Guidance on how we should lead our lives and what he would like us to do. Having shone a light on Simeon, let us fast forward to today's date. And instead of Simeon, let's pose the question. Having received the gift of baby Jesus, Emmanuel, what are you to do with this present? Have you taken this present? 
Do you own it? Or have you exchanged it? Or even thrown it away? Are you praising God? Do we know Jesus as our personal saviour? Are we challenged to present Jesus to the waiting world? Are we letting his light shine? Are we keeping the present to ourselves? Are we sharing this gift with those that we know or come into contact with? Are we picking and mixing the bits of Jesus that we like? Or are we dispensing with this gift from God, turning our backs on him? I think there's always a challenge to us as Christians. And this morning on Boxing Day, there are plenty of challenges kicking about. Afresh as we consider the present that we received from God yesterday, do we love God? Is he our Heavenly Father? Do we love Jesus, our Saviour? Do we value the fact that the Holy Spirit lives in our heart do we love God do we love Jesus do we love the Holy Spirit as we did when we first became a Christian do we learn from him day by day and seek to do the things that he wants us to do or has our relationship with God been sidetracked overshadowed clouded cooled off if so, I would like to ask us to challenge us afresh today. To ask God to help you, to show you what or who has caused ourselves to be sidetracked. Things to be overshadowed or clouded or cooled off. I want us to be honest before God and to listen to him. And if he's saying to us, it's actually what you're doing. Or it's actually what you're not doing. Let us reach out afresh to God this morning. As we thank him, praise him and glorify him for the present of Emmanuel, God with us. Let us grow our love and appreciation for God who sent his son, the Lord Jesus, to us at this time. Let us seek to live a life worthy of his calling. To be as holy, to be more Christ-like to allow God's Spirit to grow our holiness, to be authentic, to be honest and full of integrity. Let us ensure that we daily, moment by moment, place Christ at the very centre of all that we do, say, think and feel. Let us not be afraid of God's gift, let us not be reserved and hold back. Let us hold on tight to our gift to the Lord of the Lord Jesus and not allow our life, our circumstance, our situation to cloud out this gift, to reject this gift. But can I encourage us, cherish this gift. As we watch this video, be amazed of Jesus the Nazarene. As we share in this communion meal this morning, I pray that you will know and feel God's love just now. I pray that if you don't know or feel God's love this morning, that you'll ask God to reveal himself to you today. God's Son, Jesus, born to us on Christmas morning, is the one who loves us and has freed us from our sins through his death and resurrection. Through Jesus, we... You are loved, we're loosed from our chains that hold us back, we are lifted up. Your sense of worth is not based on what you do or look like, nor on what others think about you. You are of great value and worth because Jesus loves you so much. He shed his blood for you. In 1 Corinthians 15 we read these verses. Brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, 
if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, and then to the apostles, and at last he appeared to me. Let's pause to reflect on these words. Our salvation through Jesus our Saviour. He is risen from the dead and he is alive. So many people physically have seen Christ alive. The fact that we know that Christ alive is because he lives within our hearts and he has revealed himself to us. In Romans 5 we read these words. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For... If while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. You know, God's love is so unmerited it's freely given to us. And then in, again in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 we read, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. How awesome is this reassurance. We have a great God. We have a great Saviour. And we have a great Comforter who lives within our hearts. You know, God accepts us just as we are. He loves us. He forgives us. He washes and cleanses away all our sins. He takes our brokenness and our imperfections and he puts us back together again. He restores us with our hearts full of praise and thanksgiving. Let's give God thanks and praise as we share in this meal together. The simple element of bread for us represents the body of Christ that was broken for us. He went to Calvary for us, for you and me. And you know how you feel sometimes about yourself, as I do, that we are so unworthy of a saviour. Yet he loved us so much. All the way to the cross. In 1 Corinthians 11, we read these words. For I pass on to you what I received, from the Lord on the night when he was betrayed the Lord Jesus he took the bread and he gave thanks and when he'd done so he broke it and he said this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me so let us eat of the bread and give thanks to God for his Christmas gift for his son, who selflessly went all the way to the cross and endured for us. Let's pray. The simple element of wine 
which represents the blood of the Lord Jesus that was shed for us on Calvary. Powerful, powerful image. And the wonderful thing is that we know that we are stained. We know that we have sinned. We know that we are unworthy. But we, we're told in scriptures that when Christ shed his blood for us, all our sins, all our stains, all our unworthiness was washed away and we were left to be as pure as the driven snow. In Corinthians again we read these words that in the same way Jesus took the cup and after supper he said this cup is a new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Let us now drink of the wine and be thankful. But every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. And just as I lead us into our final hymn, as John Stott wrote, one day you will join the church triumphant, the great multitude that no one will be able to count, drawn from every nation, tribe, people and language. And you will stand with them before God's throne. The King of the universe will give you refuge in the shelter of his throne. You will see him and worship him day and night. The lamb turned shepherd will lead you with the rest of his sheep to fountains of living water. You will satisfy your thirst forever at his eternal springs. You choose the cross. You were obedient to death which you overcame. You broke the chains of my disgrace. You rose again so glorious. I am lost in wonder. I am lost in love. I am lost in praise forevermore. Because of Jesus' unfailing love, I am forgiven. I am restored. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, my God.